The UIM ABP Equibike World Championships started the 2020 season in a brand new venue as 61 riders from 26 countries locked horns at the first ever Grand Prix of Kuwait in four categories. The Ski Division GP1, Ski Ladies GP1, Freestyle and the Runabout GP1. In this program, we bring you all the freestyle and runabout GP1 action from Kuwait City. The northernmost Gulf state of Kuwait may be one of the smallest countries in the world, but it's one that punches above its weight in the region. Boasting one of the largest oil reserves in the world, Kuwait is a testament to luxury, modernity, affluence and culture, remarkable for a country that is 90% desert. The overwhelming majority of Kuwaitis live in the capital, Kuwait City, a modern and dynamic regional metropolis with a skyscraper studded skyline that boasts a world-class infrastructure and cutting-edge architecture with such gems as the Kuwait Towers, the magnificent Grand Mosque, one of the biggest on earth, the Souk Shark shopping complex and a range of art and history museums along with one of the biggest aquariums in the world. Kuwait is also a veritable leisure oasis with restaurants, shopping, beaches and luxury hotels that make this a unique destination. It was the perfect place to start the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship season which kicked off with the official opening ceremony including fire shows and a breathtaking fireworks display. We have uh, nearly equal participation of uh, men and women, so gender equality. Uh, you have an event which is uh, social inclusive uh, with 22 different nations participating from uh, all over the, the world. We would like to consolidate our presence here in this beautiful country and we are very much looking forward to strengthen the cooperation with uh, the Kuwaiti authorities and to ensure that there is a bright future for our sport here. In Kuwait. The Grand Prix of Kuwait Circuit on Salmiya Bay offers rough open water conditions that will pose an added challenge to riders. Uh, the circuit is a very good circuit actually, but uh, now we're going to go to the big pole position and there will be 25 riders, so there will be wave and rough condition out there now. The man who stands out in Kuwait is local hero and jet ski legend Yusuf Al Abdul Razak. The four time world champion wants to make a strong start to his year, competing in front of a partisan crowd at his home Grand Prix, having already written himself into the history books as the category's most successful rider and looking to add to his tally of 13 Grand Prix victories. Uh, we feel really good, and uh, I have a lot of friends and families here, so I'm excited to do my best and you know get the, like first place for them, and uh, hopefully it all goes well. No, no injuries, no problems. We want to end up safe for us and everyone, and uh, have a good championship. But success in home waters for Al Abdul Razak depends on whether he can take on two-time and defending world champion Jeremy Perez. The Frenchman is bidding to become only the second rider in history to win three world championships in a row. Only other man to do so, Yusuf Al Abdul Razak. The new season is uh, start very soon this year. We are in Kuwait, but it's a good place. We finished 2019 in Sharjah in very good. Uh, I win uh, the championship, so happy for win two years consecutively. We build a new engine for come here, so we ship a new engine. We try to to make good point here. Try to win also, but we want to take a maximum of points. Uh, we'll see what happens, but it uh, will be a good race. I like the condition here. We'll see. The man everyone will have to look out for is Danish ace Marcus Jorgensen, who came tantalizingly close to winning the runabout GP1 world title last year, literally losing it in the last lap of the final moto of the year. He's got some unfinished business to take care of in 2020. Last year's world runner-up Samuel Johansson is also back and the sky is the limit for the young Swede who has time and youth on his side. 
The intense competition last year, where the World Standings League changed hands almost literally from race to race, is sure to continue in 2020, with the likes of Polish rider Andrzej Wisniewski, Abu Dhabi rider Rashid Altair, Portuguese riders Lino Araujo and Christoph Augustinho, Samuel's father Johan Johansson, and Colombian female rider Andrea Dominguez. I'm very happy to be here again, the second tour in 2020. It's new days, new training. For me it's really important because the idea that I have is to show to all the women that we can do whatever that we love. So I prepared the jet ski with Malte and I'm training too hard with Joseph. Every single race I show that I be a little upgrade every single race. Also in the mix, joining their countrymen Al Abdul Razak are Kuwaitis Rashid Al Dawas and Abdullah Al Sane. The first UIM ABP race in Kuwait was underway. Moto One of the Grand Prix of Kuwait, a 25 minute plus one lap race. Starting in pole position after an emphatic win in the qualifying time trials was Emirati rider Rashid Altair, next to whom in P2 is Yusuf Al Abdul Razak, then Marcus Jorgensen in P3, Samuel Johansson P4, Jeremy Perez starting down in seventh, female riders Kylie Elmers and Andrea Dominguez P19 and P20, Kuwaiti rider Rashid Al Dawas 22, and starting back in 25th is Andrei Wisniewski. The beach start and Rashid Altair rockets off the sands and into the opening straight away to the hole shots. The Emirati Team Abu Dhabi rider out in the lead in pole position, opting for the inside alternate course as the field of 25 riders enters the circuit. Behind Altair is Yusuf Al Abdul Razak in second, another Emirati Ali Al Langawi third, then Marcus Jorgensen fourth. Altair goes into the alternate split course, taking the green track, showing incredible speed and precision as he slaloms through with lead well intact as the two start groups merge and come out. In second position, coming out of the alternate course, is Jeremy Perez, Yusuf Al Abdul Razak third behind the Frenchman, who is the two time defending world champion, looking to become the first Frenchman ever to get the world title hat trick. Swiss rider Slobodan Sobic is injured and pulls out of the race as he heads back to the beach. Back in the alternate split course, Al Abdul Razak and Perez are neck and neck through the parallel tracks, the two world championship rivals battling for the lead here in the early stages. And Al Abdul Razak does it, he passes Perez to reclaim second position behind Altair. Out in the lead, Altair veers off. He loses his way momentarily before he gets back on course, and Al Abdul Razak almost catches and passes the Emirati, but Altair just manages to hold off the Kuwaiti, who is now right behind the leader. Back in the alternate course, Al Abdul Razak senses his opportunity to catch Altair, but Altair is too fast for him. Al Abdul Razak continues the chase. Problems for Mattia Fracasso, the 2011 world champion, unable to continue the race. Meanwhile, Jeremy Perez has to go for the black penalty buoy for a missed turn, but he holds point. In the alternate course, Marcus Jorgensen on the number seven ski, racing hard through the roughening waters in the green track, and he passes Swedish rider Samuel Johansson on the exit. Jorgensen is on a roll, he hits top speeds up on the long straightaway at the top of the circuit and he manages to get past Jeremy Perez to whom he lost the world title in the last lap of the last race. Al Abdul Razak in second position, he has a huge fall, the Kuwaiti rider is in the water as he's passed by Jorgensen, Perez, Samuel Johansson and Ali Al Langawi, that's a huge blow to Al Abdul Razak's dream of winning the first ever race in home waters. Here it is again from his onboard camera, big fall there for the Kuwaiti four time world champion and he has a lot of work ahead of him for the remainder of the race. But Perez in trouble too in the rough waters as he jumps a buoy and he has to go for the black penalty buoy yet again, but this time he has riders on his tail. Meanwhile, Al Abdul Razak tries to claw his way back up the field. He's in the split course and he finds a way to get past Ali Al Langawi. Al Abdul Razak moves up to fifth. But Al Abdul Razak misses a red buoy and he has to take the black penalty buoy. Victory team rider Ali Al Langawi is out of the race with engine problems. 
Jorgensen also on the black buoy after missing a turn in these rough and wavy waters. Coming home for the win, the victor of the first moto of the year is Rashid Altair. The Emirati rider was flawless as he takes a start to finish win in Moto 1 of the Grand Prix of Kuwait. In the final lap, Al Abdul Razak jumps over a buoy, but before he takes the black buoy, he passes Samuel Johansson in the alternate course to move up to fourth. Altair with the Moto One win. Runner up is Marcus Jorgensen, with Yusuf Al Abdul Razak finishing third and Samuel Johansson fourth. After Jeremy Perez receives a post race penalty lap for missing a buoy, dropping him from third to fifth. Yes, I told you yesterday, I'm coming back. I'm ready for this competition. I hope my boats will be ready for tomorrow and win again. Freestyle category is always one of the crowd favorites as four gravity-defying aquabatic artists take each other on for the inaugural Grand Prix of Kuwait title. <laughs> Team Abu Dhabi's Rashid Al Mullah will begin the defense of his freestyle title despite breaking his shoulder while preparing for the start of the new season in Kuwait. I'm not ready, 100%, but uh, I will complete because my shoulder is broken and I'm uh, trying to push because I need the point for this uh, round, for uh, all the title, and I'm doing my best. The Emirati rider, world champion for the last two years, after 10 Grand Prix victories in succession, was uncertain as to whether he would compete, but decided last minute that he would indeed contest the double moto event in Kuwait as he seeks a world title hat-trick. Despite his injury, Al Mullah would still be the favorite, but he had to first overcome some stiff competition led by multiple Italian and European world champion Roberto Mariani, last year's world runner-up. Also competing would be Czech rider Yaroslav Turner, who was world number four last year, and Portuguese rider Polo Nunes. Polo Nunes was first out. The Portuguese rider put on a well-honed, well-prepared exhibition of freestyle skill with a bevy of tricks and charisma as he entertained the crowds and impressed the judges. Yaroslav Turner wowed the crowd with some perfectly executed backflips and some good solid combos with nice landings on most of his tricks and good technique overall over the two motos, nabbing a podium spot in Kuwait. Roberto Mariani produced an excellent bevy of tricks while also displaying outstanding creativity with some of his unique signature moves. And the crowd loved it. The Italian always a favorite and an accomplished showman. Despite his shoulder injury, Rashid Al Mullah was once again in fine form doing what he needed for the win over both motos as he was able to complete an assortment of backflips, barrel rolls, 180, 360 and 520 combos that stole the show and won him yet another overall Grand Prix victory. At the end of the two freestyle motos, Team Abu Dhabi's Rashid Al Mullah was the Grand Prix of Kuwait champion. Mariani, runner-up, and Turner just pipping Nunez for third. I'm so proud from, uh, from my, my team because after this fracture on my shoulder and I come back riding, still it's there is pain, you know, but I'm trying to push to win this title.
The first round of the UIM ADP Aquabike Parallel Slalom World Championship was held under floodlights, the five pink horse running beside the beach in Salmia Bay. Crowds gathered to take in an incredible floodlit show from the freestylers who all went out together. And after that, it was time for the runabout slalom, where Al Abdul Razak took the win in front of his hometown crowd with a perfect scorecard, winning both wins against Ali Al Langawi to get to the final and then doing the same to Marcus Jorgensen in the final. The UIM ADP family was welcomed to Kuwait for the first time with a lavish celebration and a sumptuous gala dinner as riders, crews, their families and officials celebrated the first Grand Prix event in Kuwait in style. The second and final motto of the Grand Prix of Kuwait and hometown hero Yusuf Al Abdul Razak make up for his third place finish in Moto 1 to take the top step of the podium here in front of the Kuwaiti crowds. We're going to do some adjustments in the practice and see how the handling is. You have the waves, huge waves coming from each angle in the back stretch, and you have some yachts that leave the marina, and that caused a big wave. I think I flew from one of those. But, uh, you know, I have to be careful, do my best, and uh, I guess for, get first and see what the overall gets me. He has to find a way past Altair and Jorgensen in Moto2, and the race is on as they blast off the beach and dive into the opening drag race to the whole shots. Look at that start by Rashid Altair on the number five ski. Another excellent start for him. He won the opening Grand Prix last year. Can he repeat the feat here in 2020? As Altair leads the field into the circuit for the opening lap, behind him it's Marcus Jorgensen, then Andrei Wisniewski in third, Samuel Johansson fourth, and Yusuf Al Abdul Razak fifth, but they've yet to merge with the other start group in the alternate course. Altair in the green, Yusuf Al Abdul Razak opting for the blue. Look at the speed on Al Abdul Razak. He takes excellent advantage of the first lap before the waters start to churn, picking up speed and slaloming tight through the split. Altair comes out with a lead, but he has to look over his shoulder and take stock of Al Abdul Razak charging up on him. The Kuwaiti now in second position, and Altair is his target as he breathes down the Team Abu Dhabi rider's neck. Behind Altair and Al Abdul Razak is Marcus Jorgensen in third, then Jeremy Perez up in fourth, followed by Samuel Johansson in fifth, and Wisniewski sixth, as all of the main protagonists from last year's World Championship race fill the top five slots, each vying for maximum points to kick off their new season on the right note. In the first lap after the start lap, Al Abdul Razak is giving chase to Rashid Altair, who at one point led the world standings in 2019, following his Grand Prix win in Portimao, followed by his runner-up finish in Moto1 in Olbia, Italy. Eventually, and ironically, Altair's season came undone in the last round in the UAE, where he only managed seven points from three motos. This year, Altair needs to focus on technical reliability and consistency if he's to sustain a season-long campaign for a first-ever UIM ABP world title. Riders know how literally every single point and every race counts, considering how tight the title race proved to be in 2019. Further back, number 78 rider Rasmus Koch Hansen of Denmark zips past victory team's Ali Al Langawi as Hansen moves up into seventh position. Marcus Jorgensen in third position, but he misses a buoy in the previous lap and he has to take the black buoy with Jeremy Perez on his tail. Jorgensen gets through the buoy as best he can and comes out just ahead of Perez, but Perez has the speed. This will be tight. Perez races hard, but Jorgensen picks up the pace and throttles off. Perez in pursuit, but the opportunity gone. Jorgensen out of trouble for now as the two-time world champion gives chase. 
into the split course. Al Abdurazak is desperate to snatch a win here in Moto2 and come out with a Grand Prix title in his first hometown race. The Kuwaiti opts for the green track with Altair in the blue as Al Abdurazak pours on the pressure through the parallel slalom. Can he do it? Altair has too much of a lead and he makes no mistakes through the slalom. Altair still firmly in command and on target for another romping moto victory if he can hold off the Kuwaiti and avoid any technical mishaps. But then the unthinkable happens for Altair as Al Abdurazak's onslaught continues. Altair slows to a grind, he has a problem and he is out of the race. What a blow to Altair, but Al Abdurazak now exactly where he wants to be, and with Altair unable to continue, Al Abdurazak is now the firm favorite for the Moto 2 and Grand Prix win, but he first has to avoid the same fate as Altair. There's a sad sight, Altair just bobbing in the water, the dejected rider no doubt ruining what could have been. Bad luck, I told you yesterday when I'm, my boat helped me, I'll take the champion, this uh, Kuwait champion. But I tell you, I'm not lucky today. Some problem with engine. With Altair out, Al Abdurazak now in control. Behind the Kuwaiti are last year's year end podium placers. Marcus Jorgensen in second, Jeremy Perez third, and then Samuel Johansson fourth. Al Abdurazak knows he has his work cut out for him if he's to keep that lot off his back. But if anyone can do it, it's Al Abdurazak. Al Abdurazak needs to avoid mistakes, but he jumps a buoy, and that means he'll have to go for the black penalty buoy, hoping he'll have enough of a lead over Jorgensen to cushion the setback. The Kuwaiti takes the black buoy, but he does indeed have a nice big gap to fall back on. No harm done for the Kuwaiti, but he can't afford any more mistakes as Jorgensen is riding hard and very fast. The Kuwaiti crowds now sense that their man is very close to taking the title here. Just a lap left now. The final lap. Al Abdurazak is very close to a near perfect start to the new season. There it is, the final stretch. Jorgensen is nowhere near the Kuwaiti, and Yusuf Al Abdurazak completes an emphatic win as the checkered flag goes up. He got lucky with Altair's exit, but that's racing. Al Abdurazak is the Moto2 and Grand Prix of Kuwait champion. He never said die last race, hanging on and ending up third. And this race too, he continued his dogged pursuit of Altair, waiting for the opportunity to come, and it did. What a win for the four-time world champion in his quest for an unprecedented fifth world title this year. Runner-up for Moto2 and in the overall Grand Prix results is Marcus Jorgensen. Then third place goes to Jeremy Perez with Samuel Johansson fourth in Moto2 and Rasmus Kochhansen fifth with Ali Langawi sixth, Alejandro Molina seventh, Wisniewski eighth, Johan Johansson ninth, and German Frederick Brandau completing the top ten. Amazing. Um, everyone is happy as you can see. We, I made sure that the title stays in Kuwait and it's the first uh, Grand Prix. Everyone is uh, amazed on how uh, this uh, championship is uh, started for the 2020 season. And uh, we won the Salalem, we won the Grand Prix. I can't wait to see the national anthem of Kuwait. The Grand Prix results, Al Abdurazak adds a 14th Grand Prix trophy to his collection. Jorgensen on the second step, and Perez also makes the podium ahead of Samuel Johansson fourth and Hansen fifth. Al Abdurazak leads the world standings at the end of round one, but it's already promising to be a very competitive year where anything can happen. That brings to a close the first Grand Prix of Kuwait. See you in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, which hosts round two of the 2020 UIM AVP Aquabike World Championship. One in a million, a billion is a half percent.